This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. This is a monumental episode because this is the first episode of Miles Edger Face Attorney Investigations where that is taking place after I've uploaded the first there Justice, Justice for All video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Please <laughs> don't record. interrupt me all the time, otherwise people won't be able to understand what either of us are saying. Sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, welcome back, everybody. My goal for this uh, recording session, get to the to-be-continued point, and then we probably won't be recording again until you get back from your trip. Oh, really? Okay. I'm not going to have any time tomorrow to record. You're not going to have any time tomorrow to record? No, it's small group. Oh, I forgot! And Every Link time. is coming over. Oh, yeah, and Link's coming over, I forgot. Anyhow... <laughs> now we have a new partner. This guy's giving us the finger. And then this other girl's like walking back and forth with her stuffed animal. Miss Meal, about investigating the in-flight shop. You're of no use to me asleep. Wake up. Uh, uh, what's up? Uh, I need you to come with me so I can search the shop. Go on ahead without me. I'll catch up with you later. How has this woman not been fired yet? Because of her short skirt, that's why. Come on, you should be following us. <laughs> Ooh, I am very mad. You had better hurry and bring me some evidence. If you could wait just a little longer while we look into the shop. <laughs> Don't number the birds before they are born. Don't number the... What? I have no idea what he's trying to say. Don't count your chickens, Don't before, count your chickens before they hatch, perhaps? All I ask of you is that your patience and cooperation. Well, he calmed down. I gotta go to the flight shop. March 12th, 8.42 a.m. In flight shop on flight I-390. <laughs> so this is the in flight shop. It's quite a mess in here. You think? Guess I'll have to clean things up then. <laughs> Hold on! You can't clean up a potential crime scene. Oh, thank goodness. I hate cleaning so much. I mustn't rush things here. I must remain cool, calm, and collected. Because this piggy bank was left here at the se crime scene. And this little piggy bank stayed home. <laughs> There's a very good chance, chance that the killer had paid this place yeah, a visit. Yeah, the broken oh, hey, glass man. doesn't tip you off? Uh, she's 24. 24? What the heck? I think, is that the same age as Rhoda? Yeah. yeah. Sure enough, they could not be more different. <laughs> She's not my partner. She's literally just like staring into whatever. space. <laughs> I like her weird stance though. She's just like, eh. <laughs> I don't know much about this shop, but you can still ask me about whatever. So what do you think about what do you think about what has happened regarding this case? Oh, I don't know. I think I guess you're like the killer though, Mr. Edgeworth. I can assure you that I'm here in the shop to prove just the opposite. Okay, yeah, <laughs> this is her personality. She's like a narcoleptic, basically. This is great. Yeah, but it was me that got you the permission to look around. You know? So don't forget that, okay? <laughs> She's doing like the little like bow that Rhoda does, but then she falls asleep. Yeah. <laughs> How am I supposed to thank you properly if you insist on falling asleep? Uh, well, you know what I would really show your thanks? You see that item for sale over there? Sorry, but you're going to have to make do with my words of appreciation. <laughs> Honestly, it's like... it's If you work as a flight attendant, I mean, props to you, because you don't know where the heck you're going to end up by the end of the day. But... No, you better know. <laughs> well, they'll have an idea of, like, this is how many flights, probably, that you take per day. You're gonna but... know what your final destination, the destinations of each one are, though. But what if there's a plane delay? You know? Then maybe you're, like, stuck somewhere else at the end of the day. Well, they'll, they'll figure it out. But it's like, um, what was I gonna say? I was saying something important. Oh, yeah, jet lag. That's what I was saying. Yeah. It well, can happen. What are these? Oh, those are our company's completely original line of suitcases. They're practically flying out the door! That's how popular they are. You should buy one and see how you like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's how things work on this flight, but in the real world, you try, then buy. No way! But either way, it doesn't really matter. True. Either way, why would anyone buy a suitcase AFTER they've boarded the plane? <laughs> anyway, see that? 
Just look at all Mr. Ifly heads painted on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? They're painted on with lots of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? It is certainly making something jump inside my stomach. Uh huh? Oh, I guess there's no fooling your refined taste. You looked like you really wanted to get one. And I thought I was going to make my first sale, but you saw right through it. Glad that's done, though. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? Uh, but I never showed any interest in it to begin with. <laughs> it really is horrible, isn't it? You want to know something? This suitcase was designed by Miss Rhoda. Miss Tenero designed this? Yeah, it was a company-wide contest. Um, well, it does have a very sharp design sense. Haha, <laughs> sharp. Like, stinky sharp cheddar, maybe? I really have no idea why the bigwigs decided to go with it. It's so... bleh. Button up your shirt, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Tenero designed this, did she? It's definitely not what I would have expected. Ah! You okay? Uh, I'm fine. Please watch yourself, Miss Meal. Letting a suitcase freely roll around has got to be a safety violation. Maybe the suitcase knocked him out. Here, I'll put it back. And <laughs> then she stares off into space again. Ooh. Beautiful flowers and a beautiful arrangement. I feel cleansed just by looking at them. Mr. Edgeworth, you're getting pollen all over. Oh, excuse me. What about that thing? Worst. You are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Inside this display case is a row of lifesavers and life vests for sale. We sell a lot of those when there's some kind of accident or something. But some people buy them even when nothing's going on. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? Care to buy one? I sense that this shop is one shopper away from being sued. <laughs> I do not like Cammy. I knew you were gonna enjoy voicing her. Yeah. But she's, she's like a cross so annoying. My voice for her is like a cross between Trucy and Eenie Miney. And a little no, nah, not really April May. Not really April May. April May is my high pitched voice. Oh hi. Hi. <laughs> April May. It's this is basically like Eenie Miney if she was uh, like sleep deprived uh, and or a little stoned. What do you need? <laughs> so this is designed by Miss Tenero. That's one sharp design. Oh, I can't, like, examine it closer? No. <laughs> you don't need to examine anything. Why are you- Hey, Edgeworth, why are you walking into nothing? I'm trying to squeeze between the suitcases and dive out the window. You're too this is so fat. Bad. Amateur. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't say that. <laughs> There's a wide selection of souvenirs for sale in these display cases. You know what I'd suggest? Sorry, but I have no intention of buying souvenirs on this trip. Okay, then how about you buy something for me then? As a present! I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to buy you anything. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that is one of my favorite comebacks ever, because she's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and self-absorbed, yeah. and Edgeworth just totally shuts oh, her down. and Edgeworth's good It's at that. so fantastic. <laughs> but I've had my eye on that pendant for such a long time. Try paying some attention to me when I ask you something, and then we'll talk. She's seriously- she's supposed to be our partner, she's not even following us, she's that lazy. That is lazy. great. <laughs> the glass from this display case's door is shattered all over this the floor. This reminds me of that girl that I was at, with, at, at work. They Vaping just, Veronica or no. coughing Kathy? <laughs> Kathy? You mean Cassie? I wasn't gonna use her real name, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, a different girl that I worked with. Uh, uh, the short girl can't do anything, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> but can't is spelled with a K because she can't spell. <laughs> Poor Katie. Or maybe not. Sorry, Katie. It looks like there's nothing on display inside either. Hmm? Wait, actually, I think there is something. What's this? A mini captain's hat? It's a tiny captain's hat. So small it could fit on a mouse. Mouse. Yeah. I want to sit down. Stuffed toys just like the one Miss Meal is holding are on display here. They're relatively cheap, which explains why they're displayed so haphazardly. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? You know you want one too. They're great for when you're stressed. Why do I envision stuffed animal abuse when she says that? I'm basically picturing Cammy Meal 
is basically like if Peppermint Patty grew up and became like really obsessed with attracting what? men. What? <laughs> no, but Peppermint- she's always falling asleep! But Peppermint Patty is like a sports girl. She loves like baseball, she wears sandals. Like, that would I'm going based be... off of the narcolepsy thing and the hair color, I mostly. I forgot that she would fall asleep a bunch. No, it's more like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of... Edgeworth's coming for you! <laughs> 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 Don't is, mind me, I'm just getting me, my exercise This reminds in. me of when Katara is, like, trying to make water. In that one episode, <laughs> she's, like, running in place. <gasps> I'm making my own water! <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh, when the robot... Okay, ch check the actual thing we need to check now. There are all kinds of luxury name brand merchandise for sale on this display case. They have snicker bars? <laughs> and they're lined up in just such a manner as to scream, Buy me to any passersby. And that's it. What? No, we've got the broken window! We already examined that! I don't know much about this shop, but you can ask me about whatever. Oh, I'd love to have this piece of jewelry. Can I have it? No, you may not. This is a prosecutor's badge. Hooey, then why'd you show it to me? I wanted to prove to you that I really am a prosecutor. And that it's not possible for a prosecutor like me to commit such a crime as, um, uh, <coughs> crime. <laughs> <laughs> I see that I'm just wasting my time with her cousin hair here. So what is that? Are you gonna give it to me? Oh, but I'm not supposed to accept any presents. Unless they're really worth something. It's a wallet! Don't you want a wallet? Miss Rhoda said that this piggy bank was in the shop, right? Don't you find her a tiny bit suspicious? I don't think I can say either way yet. There's not enough evidence to convince me that she was lying about anything back there. Are you sure about that? What is that? <laughs> it's your testimony. I don't remember giving that. I don't remember giving that to you ever. <sighs> Let's do some magic time. Da -da 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 -da. Well, there's the broken glasses, and there's the murder weapon, and maybe that's how they broke. Uh, why are you connecting those? Because those get connected. Okay. Hmm. The hat probably used to be on the piggy bank's head. Let's give it a go and see. I believe this piggy bank was forcibly removed from this display case. Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? In case of emergency, break glass! And he was just like, I NEED THAT! I NEED IT! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? Don't tell me you don't know what fiends go uh, where in this shop. Well, I don't. Miss Rhoda's in charge of the place? So come on, how should I know anything? I sense that further inspection of this display case is needed. What happens if you fail logic? Oh. We've never done that. That's true. It's not very interesting or funny. Oh. Hmm, the pieces don't fit together quite right. Oh, come on. Thought it'd be better. Oh, that's fine. Inspect. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook I love and how pen. they would steal that and not like jewelry. <laughs> Is this the same man as the one portrayed by the statues around the elevator? Yeah, that's a paperweight of the founder of iFly Airlines, Mr. Hugo iFly. On the bottom shelf, we have the cute one. The middle shelf is the realistic one. And on the top shelf, that's the floral version. Floral? Are you sure about that? Let me guess, you just said the first thing that came to your mind, right? Looks like I hit the bullseye. Wish she reacted funny. I want the iPhone. Books? iFly Airlines related books line on this shelf. The history of iFly Airlines, the future of iFly Airlines, the seven wonders of iFly, fly, fight on iFly Airlines, working name you, Go You Airlines, I heart fly in. The titles make it very clear that they won't be making the top sellings list anytime soon. For a sec, I thought that the the I fly in was just them swearing, but that they put out. No. For security, there's a lock on the display case. Miss Meal, if I may ask you about the lock. Um, 
the one who's in charge of the shop is Miss Rhoda, so she's got the keys to all the display cases. I see. Oh, I bet you want to buy something? Do you want me to go get the key from her? No, th that's all right. The glass on this door is broken. Perhaps it was the killer who bro broke it in order to take the piggy bank? But it's a bit odd that the inside of the case is so devoid of glass shards. Plus, the glass broke rather cleanly. Ah! W what is it? I... I touched the glass and it cut my finger. It hurts! Mr. Edgeworth, it hurts! Please tell me you can deal with such a minor cut on your own. If we examine she that over and over again, she'll cut her finger over she and over again and eventually dies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is slowly turning into like the plain whatever crashes Paper Mario where it's just like you can get this curl to cut her finger like 500 times till it's amputated. <laughs> her sprite changes. Her sprite should change. Huh? Is this spot oh. somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Do, 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 do. I wonder what it is. Eureka! Eureka! There is definitely something very unusual about this. About what? If the killer had broken the glass to get at the Mr. Ifly bank, there should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess it'd be like that. However, there's not a single piece of glass inside the display case. Nope. No, there isn't. Which means that the glass was broken from the inside out. The piggy bank must have fallen over from the turbulence and right through the glass. Yeah, that's for sure. There's so much glass all over the floor. I'm willing to bet that this hat was knocked off in its head. Knocked off its head at the time, too. Uh, that's nice. Which leads me to believe that the killer took the Mr. I fly from here after the turbulence. I will say, any sort of turbulence that's coming by, all of the flight attendants are very well equipped yep. to, de to deal with they it. Have so I feel like cups on their shoes. They don't. They're just good at dealing with turbulence. Unless, of, of course, like the plane's doing a barrel roll or whatever. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. Yeah. Take your power naps on your own time, Miss Meal, and listen when I'm talking. What? But the murder occurred before the turbulence. Which rules this piggy bank out as the murder weapon. So you mean the bank's not the real murder weapon? It's a fake. Yes, at this point that is a very real possibility. Um, but then what if what if the when the killer went to take Mr. Ifly, they broke the glass by accident? The display case is locked, so that's highly unlikely. Yeah, but there's one person who could have. Oh, and who would that be? Miss Rhoda, of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of the place, so she has the keys to everything. Miss Rhoda Teneiro, huh? Also, you could have gotten the keys from her, but whatever. Uh, no, like, no, definitely not. I don't know much. I cut my finger on those bad pieces of glass. Don't blame the glass for doing something that you did to yourself. Just be more careful. Same to you. You're the one walking all over the broken glass. You sure you're okay? I'm fine. Any glass I walk on, I crush. Like this. That's nice. Please be careful around the display case, okay? Wouldn't want you to get hurt. Compared to the glass around my feet, the inside of this case is nothing to be afraid of. After all, no glass fragments appear to have ended up inside. Then I guess even you can tidy up the case, right? Perish the thought! Hey, listen to my logical thought process. Uh, what's logic? Logic with, um, three Ks. <laughs> no. What? No KKK references. Oh, worry. sorry. Two Ks. Okay. Whatever. I was trying to make it sound like she was saying logic. With like that would be a bunch of eyes, not a bunch of Ks. But I had, like, the... Like, when you, like, are speaking slight German, where it's like the ach. Like That's that. C-H. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> yes, there is definitely something wrong here. What? What's with the sudden yelling? Tell me, Miss Meal, don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? 
Oh, well, sure. They're totally ooh strange, like the color and such. That's not what I'm talking about. Now pay us attention. Ah, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth. S sorry. Ahem. These suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. I love how she has no pupils. <laughs> that makes she's it even just, better. She's just got the dead eyes. The dead eyes. Yeah, they look a bit uptight, don't you think? But I guess they take after their creator. <laughs> Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Meal. Don't you find it unusual that these cases are the only things undisturbed by the turbulence? Never mind, I'd sooner find an answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. Upon closer inspection, they really are quite hideous. <laughs> I wonder how Miss Rhoda would have reacted if you heard what she just said. What you just said. What's wrong? She makes a good point. It would be wise of me to watch what I say out loud. What's this? I've spotted something that's not quite right. Flowers. What is so unusual about the suitcase? Oh, between the two. Mm -hmm. There was one that rolled, one that didn't. One has the things on the feet to prevent them from rolling. Take that! This is what is so odd. I don't think it's that strange at all. W well, maybe not to the that extent. Uh, <clears throat> but those are different. I must endeavor to think this. I should let the answer come to me. But that's the difference. That is the difference. We just put it on the wrong set of wheels. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's the difference. There's something very peculiar about these wheels. Huh? As in? As in, there are no stoppers in place on these. Without stoppers, one would think that the turbulence would have sent it flying. And? <sighs> and so it is very likely that the suitcase was placed here after we hit that turbulence. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? This was apparently designed by Miss Tenero herself. But this <laughs> what? Now that I can see it up close, it looks like zombie ghosts. Like, I fly. Woo! I fly. I fly. I fly. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> the design has a certain je ne sais quoi about it. I don't speak French. I don't either, but I think I knew at least that. Yes, perhaps that is the best way to put it. I know Avoir. Avoir. Hmm. It would appear to be unlocked. Let's take a look at what's inside. A piece of cloth. And it's soaked with blood. Yeah, it, it's blood. It appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to our murder after all. So explain this to me. What does this suitcase have to do with the murder? I believe it's pretty safe to say that the killer used this suitcase in some manner. Such as to move something, perhaps? Ugh, well, aren't you just talking about the cloth then? That alone is too small. A larger item would have been needed to move what I'm thinking of. The thing I believe the killer used the suitcase to transport is... The body! <laughs> Not the body. That would be too ridiculous. Um, His well, cell phone it's... is huge. It's so big. It's, it's like the one Roger the one Fox gets that in that one put... Fox trap chain. I forgot about that one where it's like a brick. No, it's like the Two size bricks. of a person. Oh yeah, that one. Sorry, I was thinking of um Walt Duncan. Yeah. Uh well it's probably like the Tanuki thing, the one thing that you could put in there. This? Yeah. The Take that. Miss Meal, wake up. Huh? Did you say something just now, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, I don't know, but I don't think that's it. Oh this? No no, I was just seeing if you were awake. My real explanation begins now. Is she really asleep? Well, would it be the... the... It would make no sense to transport the Sky Magazine. <laughs> I need a huge... Is this the body? That seems a bit ridiculous. Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? isn't that big. You couldn't fit a grown man in there. You might You'd be, be to, surprised. You might be able to fit a child. If Samus can go into a morph ball. Okay, Samus has a suit that allows her to, like, compress. Also, Samus... People can fit in really tiny places. Yeah. Especially if they're dead and you can, like, twist Oh, and their you bodies. can manipulate their bodies. Yeah, okay. So I was about to be like, it'd be too painful to actually, like, do that. But... But... 
In light of this, I'd say that Mr. Hicks was moved into the elevator from someplace else. Which means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. So you're saying that after moving the body into the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase in here and just left it? Exactly. What is it? Um, nothing. Just that... I was thinking about what Miss Rhoda said about coming here for something. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I think this is... yeah. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. You kept him busy for a long time! We were probably doing that for 20 minutes. <laughs> so she's just like, oh, but Captain! You have to let me like, my no! <laughs> I'm very sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, but the captain feels that he has allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. I understand his sentiments, however, if I'm not allowed to complete my investigation, the crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. If I must stop, then I insist I be allowed to oversee the preservation of the two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's your only condition, then I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Sounds like fun. We can camp out and watch over everything together. I found proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge. And I have enough evidence to prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Mio reminded me about Miss Tenero. I can't allow my investigation to end here. The truth must come to light. That was a quick to be continued. This is the first to be continued for the case. Oh, I meant today. <laughs> you made it sound like we were going to be recording for a full hour. I couldn't. I honestly don't remember this case all that well. Okay. So I didn't know, honestly. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. I think the plane might be landing? Already? We've only just been on here. Although I don't know how far into the flight it was that there that was the, the turbulence and Edgeworth got knocked out. It's down. fairly it was like, far into the flight it makes. Yeah, so. it was after the stop. Okay, so look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.